Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the promotion ceremony in honor of Major General Xavier T. Brunson. Our host for today's ceremony is the Commanding General of Forcecom, General Michael Garrett. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the invocation given by Lieutenant Colonel J.P. Smith and the national anthem played by the Rainier Quintet led by Staff Sergeant Solis of America's First Corps Band. join me in prayer this morning. Almighty and merciful God, we are so thankful that you have blessed us this morning as we gather to celebrate Major, Xavier, Major General Xavier Brunson's promotion to Lieutenant General. We realize that promotion comes neither from the north, south, east, or west, but it comes exclusively from you, our omnibenevolent God. We are grateful for General Brunson's tremendous calling, motivational leadership impact, and the genuine care and concern he models for those within his sphere of influence. For he has been faithful in service to this great country through many deployments in here at home, standing shoulder to shoulder with our leaders, soldiers, DA civilians, and those with whom he leads. We ask your blessing upon him, Colonel Retired Kirsten Brunson, Rachel, Rebecca, Joshua, and the entire Brunson family, who proudly stand beside him, supporting him on his journey in this honorable profession. May your sovereign hand continue to guide him as the commanding general of America's First Corps. May he continue to rely on you to order his steps on his path of engaged, energetic, and effective leadership. Be with each person assembled here this morning and bless all family and friends who have traveled far and near to witness the perpetual favor bestowed on Lieutenant General Brunson. This we pray in your matchless and majestic name. Amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, General Michael Garrett. Well, that's the kind of intro I like. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. And, uh, you know, the only uh, regret this morning, uh, X, is that we can't have more people in here uh, because of uh, COVID protocols. Uh, because I'm sure that um, there are a whole bunch of other people, people in your own organization, that want to be a part of celebrating uh, this uh, promotion today. Well, for everybody here, thanks for joining us as we promote Xavier Brunson to the rank of Lieutenant General and welcome him 
and his family into a new phase of service and senior leadership. You know, these events always provide a chance to talk about the importance of soldier or family in the soldier's life. Because if you know anything about Xavier Brunson, you know family is a very, very big part of his life and a very big part of his Army story. I know it's X's big day, but I do want to spend just a little bit of time today talking about many of the people who have helped him along the path that has led to this day. You know, X is the son of an Army Sergeant Major. He was born on Fort Bragg and raised within some of the Army's exclusive gated communities. <laughs> Along with his brothers, Javi and Tavi, X likely discovered early in life that he was born to serve his nation and lead soldiers. Sergeant Major and Mrs. Brunson, I want to thank you for the, from the bottom of my heart for your service and for giving us this current generation of Brunson leadership. To X's wife, Kristen, Kirsten, I was up this morning at 245 <laughs> to sit in on like four hours of warfighter AARs. <laughs> so if I slur just a little bit, <laughs> yeah, I am admitting a little bit of weakness in my in my uh, my old age. But Kirsten, uh, and and I say this often, and nobody has ever challenged me on it because we all know it's true especially those of us who are married and those of us who are married and in this business. I know uh, Sergeant Major, Mrs. Brunson, Javi Tavi, and everybody else in here, Joshua even knows, that if it wasn't for mom, none of this would be possible. And you know what? That is always the case. There is always some incredibly strong, smart, capable woman or spouse in, in, in our current day, but we're talking about a woman in this case, uh, that has led the Brunson family, even when dad was home, still leading uh, as many uh, of our spouses do. You know, it's also uh, incredible, not just, Kirsten, the influence you've had on your family, but also the legions of young Kirsten alkalites, you know, that are out there raising their families, trying to live their lives uh, in the way that they saw you. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, that uh, is probably your biggest contribution uh, to our Army. You know, the number of families out there that have been able to watch you and learn uh, from you uh, as, um, you know, you've, you've been an Army, Army spouse. You know, to the kids, Joshua's the only one here today. Um, is Rachel, and are they there? Rebecca? Uh, I was going to give you some of my Hangul, but it has escaped me. <laughs> but, but both Rachel and Rebecca are in uh, Korea, and you said north of Seoul? Mm -hmm. So that's like the DMZ. <laughs> you didn't tell me. I wasn't thinking about that. <laughs> hey, you guys better learn. You better, you better learn Korean quick. <laughs> you, you may need it. But but for the kids, though, I do want to uh, tell you thanks. You know, I know how it is. I grew up in the army. Um, I grew up as an army brat. The army is all I've ever known. Uh, and I just want to thank all of you. You know. Uh, uh, Rachel and Rebecca and Joshua, you too, for uh, allowing us to keep your dad busy with yet another Army promotion and another command tour. Congratulations on taking this next step along with him, and thank you in advance for your patience and for being there for him as he takes on even more of the nation's most important challenges in the coming years. You know, of course, this promotion's a little bit overdue, uh, you all remember in a ceremony this past June, we said farewell to then the First Corps Commander, Lieutenant General Randy George, and we entrusted uh, Major General Xavier Brunson with command in his place. Ever the professional, X kept his head down, got right to work, 
and let me leave without even pointing out that we'd forgotten to promote him. <laughs> so here we are. Here we are, four months later. With congressional confirmation in hand, we are ready to formally introduce First Corps and our Army to our newest three-star general. Not that Xavier Brunson needs much of an introduction, especially here at JBLM, where he commanded the 7th Infantry, 7th Infantry Division for the past two years. You know, likewise, X is well known and trusted by leaders and soldiers across our Army. As far as general officers go, he is about as operational as they come, especially considering the six tours of duty that sent him into Iraq and into Afghanistan. And in the brief periods X has not spent leading soldiers in combat, he has been training soldiers for combat, which is why I find great comfort in knowing that uh, Xavier Brunson is at the helm of First Corps, making sure that this team stays ready for its many important missions. You know, I remind everybody that I speak to these days why we exist as an army. And we exist for one reason. We exist to fight and to win our nation's wars. In Xavier, we are promoting an officer who has spent his career as close as possible to the fight and who is ready to prepare our forces for the next one, if ever and whenever it comes. X, I could keep going, but we have another ceremony to get to in a few minutes, and I want to save some of my compliments for that one. <laughs> but again, Kirsten to you and Rachel, Rebecca, uh, Joshua, and the entire Brunson family, um, congratulations. And like everybody in this room and everybody in that room and uh, all of the folks that are within earshot, I am extremely proud. Uh, of your many achievements that have led to this day, and I am incredibly excited to see the great things that you are going to continue to do for our soldiers uh, and our army. This really is uh, a historic uh, day. Uh, if you, again, you, know, you look at what uh, Sergeant Major and Mrs. Brunson you know, have done, uh, not only is it inspirational, uh, but it is, in my view, you know, there are, there, there are some pretty powerful, you know, families out there. So maybe you think about uh, Peyton and uh, Eli Manning, you know, that's a powerful family. Uh, but, you know, the family I like to think about are the, uh, in Antwerp, right? Uh, you know, you got uh, two brothers that, um, you know, both serve at the special mission unit, right? That's a pretty big deal. But I tell you what. I have been in the Army uh, 38 years, and I do not know if I have come across a family with the talent and the potential uh, that exists uh, in this family. Uh, and it's, um, it is a tribute, Sergeant Major, ma'am, it is a tribute to the way that you raised your boys and the example that you have set for them uh, for their entire lives. Uh, that, uh, that, you know, allowed them to marry up, right? <laughs> because uh, as good as they are, as I said before, you know, me and Joshua, uh, we know that Dad wouldn't be here if it weren't for Mom. So again, let's go ahead and uh, promote you, uh, Xavier, to Lieutenant General. Team Brunson, please join General Garrett on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated for the publishing of the orders. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of Xavier T. Brunson. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore appointed in the United States Army from Major General to Lieutenant General. Appointment is effective 1 October 2021 with the date of rank of 1 October 2021, by order of the Secretary of the Army, signed Christine Wormuth, Secretary of the Army. General Brunson's mom, Delphine, and his wife, Kirsten, will remove and pin on General Brunson's new rank. Come on, come on. It's okay. <laughs> 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 Your perfume is <laughs> General 
General Brunson's son, Joshua, will now present the beret with General Officer Three Star Insignia. <laughs> Thank you, Team Brunson. At this time, we would like to invite General Brunson's father, Sergeant Major Retired Brunson, and Command Sergeant Major of Hospital to the front. A general officer flag is issued upon promotion to every Army general officer since they were first, first authorized by General Order No. 4, dated 22 August 1903. The flag is on a scarlet background and displays white stars corresponding to the rank of the general officer. Due to the respect afforded to this distinctive rank, this flag may be displayed to signify the presence of the general officer. At this time, Sergeant Major Retired Brunson will uncase, unfurl, and present the three-star flag to Lieutenant General Brunson. Thank you, Sergeant Major Brunson. The military officers oath is a combination of constitutional requirements, historical influence, and centuries old custom. Though the first oath of office under the Constitution of the United States for officers non-commissioned officers, and enlisted soldiers dates back to 1789, the officer's oath has been changed over the years. The version that we use today was approved by Congress in 1884. General Garrett will now administer that oath. <laughs> I state your name. I Xavier Tanel Brunson. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States. In the grade of Lieutenant General. In the grade of Lieutenant General. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Senate. That I will support the Senate. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And I will bear true faith. And that I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the Senate. And allegiance to the Senate. I take this obligation freely. I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. The purpose of evasion. The purpose of evasion. And I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office upon which I'm about to enter. Of the office upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Xavier T. Brunson. Hey, I'm going to take this thing off because I'm just going to wet it up. Um, hey, I just want to, first of all, thank you, sir, for making time to do this for me and uh, to do this to represent our Army and senior leadership and what's required of us. I thank you for your consistency and your competence and your kindness. Though not a C word, it sounds like a C. <laughs> but I appreciate that. And I think that sometimes we forget um, that we are to be officers and gentlemen and gentlewomen, and uh, that kindness goes a long way. Uh, being able to state plainly what the requirements are because the Army runs on requirements, the things that we need to do and accomplish, uh, I thank you for that. Ms. Brenda Lee and Sergeant Major Jensen, thank you all for being here today, taking time to pay into this community and, and all that it means for us. I, I find myself in a place where my job, believe it or not, as I've gotten more rank, becomes simpler. I, I prayed one day and said, Lord, what do I need to do to command a division? And I wasn't looking forward. And what I found in the Bible was to 
do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. And uh, so if you see me crying, it's because I never saw that. That's a good thing. I've tried my whole life to be associated with people. You know, the boss spoke about family. And I've tried to always associate with people that uh, if my father or my brothers saw me with them, they would not be ashamed. And uh, <clears throat> what I would tell you is, if I were to say General Garrett, General Austin, General Miller, General Cody, General Casey, uh, General LaCamera, General Flynn, uh, who's my USERPAC commander now, if I were to talk to you about those men, when I saw them on Arden Street or when I saw them in the Army, they were who they are now. They're smarter, they've got more wisdom, they've got more experience, but they're finishing well. And what I need to do for my son and for my Army is I need to finish well. Finishing well means that I don't need to be a good Corps commander. Anybody that's in here wearing the uniform could be a good Corps commander. What I want to be is good for my Corps. If I'm good for my Corps, I'll be good for my Army. That's what I'm about. So everything that I do is not about me, but it's about what's going to come behind me. I've got to make it better, like you did for me. When I stalked you on our dens and they said, hey, there's this guy, Mike Garrett, who's down in the 325. <laughs> I was a lot faster then. So I'd run down around the 325 just to put eyes on him. And it gave me something to guide off of. Uh, I can tell you about the times I ran through. I found General Austin one time running up in Area J. Uh, I found him. He found me out on Sicily and told me you should always want to get caught doing the right thing. And uh, I've taken that to heart. But those were things that I learned at home. Again, associations. When I went to college, my dad was stationed in Germany. I was pretty much alone, but I fell in with a group of men from Omega Sci-Fi, uh, more specifically uh, Gamma Epsilon chapter, and most especially uh, the 42 men who I pledged with in 1990, an association that's continued to carry me. And though I might not ever rise to the, to the level of the founders, I, I will always endeavor not to embarrass my fraternity and uphold its values, which I hold dear. Uh, to my family, who I'm going to give gifts and not make eye contact with. <laughs> I, I want to tell you all that uh, I'm about finishing well. I'm about being an example that you never have to be ashamed of. And I think if we go into this business of ours thinking about people and why people first matters to our Army now more than ever, it's the families, the families that support us and drive us all. A Tweety who I've known, I'm going to call you Tweety in public. <laughs> a Tweety who I've known since uh, we were in elementary school and we used to ride bikes on Yadkin Road, which I know anybody that's been on Yadkin Road lately doesn't say, y'all are crazy. <laughs> we would actually ride out in the traffic. And uh, I, I appreciate you all, you and your wife, and Donna, being here today, and Joe Benz, who I've known since we were both lieutenants getting yelled at by General Costello and, and, and his boss. Um, thank you for being here today. It means much. And to the team that's here, I appreciate you all sincerely. Miss Alex, a gold star wife, uh, gold star spouse, who's here with us today. She and her husband, her, her dad, Chuck. Uh, thank you all for being here. It, uh, I appreciate you all. And to, to the whole team, thank you all for showing up. So I'm going to go on and do this now before I get bad. <clears throat> Try to cover up this logo so that we don't do product placement. But, um, <laughs> this is for you. Mm -hmm. You can open that now if you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else? Should I go out of order? So my mom, who told me uh, I didn't feed her last night, so <laughs> there's a Texas Roadhouse gift certificate in there. <laughs> <laughs> to, to my son Joshua, who still hugs me and kisses me. <laughs> to my brothers. <laughs> Whatever you think about me, multiply that. The boss said, it's odd that uh, I stand here. I'm not the best officer in my family. 
I was hanging out the night before I got commissioned. And so I woke up at uh, 6.30 before 8 o'clock formation, uh, many miles from Kansas. Uh, it had been in the step show. <laughs> so I'm rushing back to campus, and I didn't think that it would be hard to find a silver dollar. That's the hardest thing to do in, uh, in and around Chesapeake, Suffolk, Virginia, Huntington Roads, Virginia, early in the morning. So the best I could do was a 7-Eleven guy that says, hey, I got this scratched up 50 cent piece, you can have it. <laughs> so then I grabbed my chili dog and my Slurpee and I moved out with that 50 cent piece. Dad, come up here please. So my dad whispered to me when we hugged after he uh, threw on my flag, he said, hey man, you still owe me 50 cent. <laughs> so, I think this uh, core coin, which is actually legit now, this is the first one I've ever given out wearing three stars. The first coin I'd like you to have. Love you. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, listen, we've got another thing to do here now. Um, I, I truly, truly am appreciative of all that I've been given. And I know, uh, as the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. And that's a debt I'm willing to pay. And I'll do it every day, again, so that I can finish well. It's selfish, a little bit, because I know where I want to be when I'm done. Um, but I, I just want you all to know that I'm in this to get things done for my army, uh, for my corps, and, uh, and for our people. We've got to get it done, because war fighting is what we're all about. We can only do that if we take care of our people. So thank you all very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join in singing in the Army song. <laughs> Thank 
gentlemen, this concludes today's promotion ceremony. General Garrett invites you to join him at 10.30 in front of the First Corps headquarters for the First Corps Assumption of Command. Thank you for joining us and have a blessed day. All right, thank you, Dan. Y'all go get your stuff.